Hello, welcome pen friends. Welcome to Chris's Inked Pens for June 2020. Um, really excited today because even though there are a lot of repeats on the pens, there is one new to me pen today. And uh, all of my inks except for one are new to me. So it's kind of like really interesting how that worked out. So what I'll do is show you the pens that I have inked up and then we're going to look at the ink panel. Then I'll do a writing sample and we'll flip back after that and see how it went in May with uh, my combinations, my writing pen and ink combinations. So first of all is an old steady standby for me. This is my Lamy Vista with and I did put the broad nib on it. So oftentimes I'll use it with the fine nib, but I really wanted uh, the color I have in it to be shown off in a broad nib. So that's what I have. And then next is the uh, Twisby Eco with the white and rose gold. And it's, it's relatively new to me. And I am using it for the second time in just a few months here to try and see how things will go with a different ink and it's going to be an interesting report because the first time around it didn't go too well but i don't think it's the pen anymore so anyway that's good news for me i'm really happy because it's a stub nib so it's a 1.1 stub and i've i haven't done a lot of work on stub nibs <laughs> I've smoothed a lot of fine nibs in my day, but not stub nibs, so. Okay, so this is the Gen Hao 159, and it does have the 1.5 Goulet stub on it, one of my very favorite nibs that gets moved around a lot from, usually from Gen Hao to Gen Hao. <laughs> okay, and then next is my Pilot Vanishing Point. This is the most expensive pen in my collection. I love how it looks, and I love how comfortable, it, for me, it is to grip. Uh, it hasn't always been the best writer, but since I've started to find good inks for it, things are turning around. And this is the gunmetal rhodium edition of it. So I just love the color and the finish on the pen. Okay. And then next is uh, one of the first fountain pens that I got. It's the Caveco Sport. It's the Ice Sport in blue. And I have it eyedroppered. And it has a medium nib that I smoothed, so that it came with baby's bottom, and it, it's a good writer now, though. I put a lot of effort into that. Okay, then next is uh, a Jin Hao X450 in this kind of a red swirl or red marble. I'm not sure what they call that. I can't remember. And I do have a medium black Goulet nib on that, on this pen. So, giving that a try with an ink that I'm not sure whether it's going to cooperate, but we'll find out. And then this is the pen that's brand new to me. It just came this week. It was sent by a generous pen friend whose initials are CW, and thank you so much. Um, this is a Wingsung, and it's a, th a 3013. It is a vacuum filler. I had almost purchased one of these uh, back a while ago, back before the pandemic and when you could still order from China, but I wasn't sure whether I'd be able to handle one, you know? I had seen a little bit of trouble that one of my pen friends had, but I watched several videos and it was still on my wish list, so it was really a surprise to have that come in. It does have a fine nib on it, and oh boy, wait till you see that. That's going really well too. So, okay, next up is another wing sung. This is uh, the 3008. It's a piston filler. And I think you can probably tell that's pink ink in there. But I do have an actual Lamy nib on it. I have a Lamy fine nib, one of my very best nibs from Lamy there on it. And so we'll see how that goes. Okay, so I'm going to set up for you to be able to see my ink colors and we'll talk about those for a minute and then we'll do a writing sample. Okay, I even have them in order, but we'll be you'll be seeing them as I write with them, so you'll uh, but I'll, I'll kind of remind you on which pen. So the first ink is Monteverde Caribbean Blue, and I've got that in the Lamy Vista. I just isn't that nice and bright. It it looks like it'll be really cheerful for letter writing, and that's one reason that I went ahead and chose a broad nib because I really prefer broad nibs and uh, stub nibs for my letter writing, pen pal letter writing. Okay, so next up is the Birmingham Summer Jade. And I have that in the, the Twisby Eco uh, with the stub nib that was giving me trouble with a diamine ink, which is very rare. So I needed to find out. Um, and this, the Birmingham inks, in my opinion, are always very flowy. 
and they never give me any kind of trouble with uh, feeling dry in a pen. So that's a really good uh, color too, kind of a summery color and it's just pretty. So I chose that. And then next up is a kind of an orange. Uh, it's It kind of leans into brown or burned orange too, but and the camera brightens it up just a tad. So to you, it's really looking a little brighter orange. This is the Pure Pens Pending Sands. It's from the Celtic set. And I have that in the Gen Hao with the uh, Goulet 1.5 stub on it. So that's gonna be interesting. <laughs> okay, and next up, ooh, this brand new to me sample. In fact, all of these, it's the first time I've written with, with these, other than I did have uh, this one in a, a glass nib, and of course, Roar and Klinger, that's a different story. That's an old standby ink. But all of the other seven inks, except for Casia, are new to me in, in pens. So Aurora Purple is brand new in the door. I'd ordered a sample of that. It's just that bright kind of uh, purple, almost magenta. It's gorgeous, and I, I, from what I know about Aurora inks, I would be a good choice for the vanishing point because I have felt like until I got a really flowy high quality ink into this pen I just wasn't happy with it. It didn't matter what I put in it so um, we'll see how that is going too. So next up is Diamine Alexandrite. It's a collaboration with uh, Diamine and Niche Pens and it's gorgeous. It's a it's a rich blue with a lot of red sheen, like it's a sheen monster. That's why it's making it look darker. It's more of a teal, but it's, you know, it can't help itself. The camera's picking up on the red sheen that, that goes across that. Let me pick it up and just show you. I think you could probably see that red sheen on the edges. Now I probably won't be able to get it straight again. It's kind of tricky sometimes to get this panel just right. But Okay, so down here is another new sample, of course. Noodler's Tokyo Gift Cherry Blossom. Um, really, really pretty. I like the name of it. I think that might be what I fell for. Uh, but I, I like the shade too. And I actually bought it more, the sample more for artwork. But I still wanted to see it in a pen. So... Um, I've got it in the uh, Gen Hao X450. <laughs> I, I don't know why I'm showing you the pens. We're going to write with them in a minute. But this is the Caveco is where I have the Diamine Alexandrite. I just thought that's a good match. And I had a feeling that that pen would write well and that I could stand to write with it a long time with the eyedropper. So the new pen got my standard ink. Roaring Klinger Casia is the ink that I reach for when I get a new pen because I know how this ink behaves. I know it so well and I will suspect a pen if I have trouble with this ink. But if it's another ink, it could be anything, you know, because I just have used it so much for so long now that I, I have this comfort level with understanding how it works. So I tried um, the Roaring Clinger Casia in the Wing Sung 3013. And then last but not least, um, I have La Artesian, and I think it has another name too. It says Pastier or something, Rose Gren Grenade Pink. I'm probably butchering the whole name. But I have that in my Wing Sung um, 3008 piston filler and one of the reasons was I had a feeling but I'm not sure that the pink may stain the section but I really don't care with this I've got four of these that I beat around and this is the oldest one so I, I put it in here to kind of test the waters out it, it is a kind of a clearish a clear white section so it, it probably will it other inks have done that too okay so let's do a writing sample I'll be right back Okay, we are in the Bond Travel Gear 68 GSM Tomoy River white paper. It's an A5 hardcover notebook that you can't find anymore, but I sure I'm going to enjoy the rest of this one. So I'm going to start right out with the Lamy uh, Vista with the uh, Monteverde Caribbean Blue. I just, I absolutely love this shade and it's just gorgeous. This was from a pen friend, the ink sample. Thank you very much. Um, let's see if I can, I probably can't talk and do this. So, Lamy Vista with a broad nib. Whoops, I need to be hugging the tripod, I guess. <laughs> and Monteverde. Oh, it's a nice wet writer. <clears throat> Caribbean blue. 
and I'm going to try to make room for the little smudge up here. Yeah, that's really nice. Nice wet writer. <laughs> I hope we're going to have good enough uh, visuals here. We had a booming truck go by that sat next door for half an hour with their their music going so i had to wait and i was a little delayed <laughs> so i'm a little jumpy now this is the twisby uh eco <clears throat> rose gold with a 1.1 stub on it and this is like night and day the difference um i took it uh, when i filled it yesterday and i really took it through some paces to see I wanted to make sure that it wasn't just the newly filled business that made it right good. And now it's really doing well with this ink. Okay, Twisby Eco 1.1. This is how it should write. You know, it's just nice and wet and no hesitation. And this is Birmingham Summer Jade. This came in a uh, pen parcel back when they were doing that. I hope they bring that back. I really enjoyed that and really couldn't help myself. <laughs> uh, you know, but to get that subscription, even though I had so much ink. So that that's just a pleasure. That'll be great for letter writing. Okay, and then next up is the Jen Hao 159 in orange with gold trim. And it's got the 1.5 Goulet stub that I use so often. I love it. And again, this is a nice wet writer. It's just exactly how I like like it to be. Uh, let me see if I can give you just a little closer. But as soon as I start doing that, sometimes we get lack of focus. So I've got to be careful. Okay, Jin Hao, 159. I see a lot of shading already with this. 1.5. Oh, I was going to put Goulet. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. Oh, it's a nice wet writer. Okay, so this is that Pure Pens. It's from the Celtic set. And this is, was from a pen friend as well. This sample, thank you very much. Uh, Pendine Sands. I'm just going to put Celtic. Oh my goodness, that's gorgeous. It just, you could tell that's going to be super nice for letter writing. It, it's not an orange that will um, blind you. It's actually just slightly toned down in person from what you're seeing. The camera and the lighting does brighten it up a little. So next is the Pilot Vanishing Point with a medium nib. Oh, I'm doing that again. I, I meant to put two spaces or blocks between these, but I keep forgetting. Oh, and this is just the gorgeous Aurora Purple ink. <clears throat> when it writes this nice, you know, when I get the right ink in it, I just am really happy that I purchased it. But I, it, 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 I did make a mess filling it because I left the converter in because I didn't have an empty uh, cartridge to fill up for it. And those of you who know about the converters, it just doesn't seem like it works. You have to use your ink syringe. And I was kind of in a hurry and I, I got ink everywhere, but oh well. At least it was purple, my favorite color. <laughs> okay, even, even then that didn't skid as far. Let's try that one more time. So it's a nice, it's nice wet writer right now compared to what it has been, but I still wouldn't, you know, put that over the top. It is a medium nib. It, it's possible that I, I should have a broad nib on it, but. Okay, Aurora Purple. I just love that color. It's gorgeous. Okay, let's see if I can remember the proper spacing. <laughs> At least, you know, a little late in the game. But still, this is the Caveco Ice Sport in blue, and it's a medium nib. And this is where I'm testing out Diamine Alexandrite, which was sent to me actually by two pen friends. And so that gave me enough to uh, fill it. I had to go and get the other uh, ink sample vial to go ahead and fill it all the way. And I know I'll be writing with this for a, a good while. Okay, so this is Caveco. Ice Sport, medium nib, <clears throat> and it is Diamine <clears throat> Alexandrite. Alexandrite. There are two of these. One is a shimmer ink, and one is uh, not. And this is this is the one that is not a shimmer ink. 
but it is the collaboration between uh, diamine and niche pens. Okay, next up is the Jinhao uh, X450. Well, I went blank for a minute there. With a medium black goulet nib on it. I like this, this pretty much best of the ones that I have that are the uh, X450s. And I, I really have only had red ink in, in this particular one. So I'm going to see how this goes. So this is Jin Hao. Uh, right off the bat, I kind of noticed I, I wasn't thinking it was as wet a writer as it should be. But I've been writing with so many broad nibs <clears throat> that that's probably what is causing that perception. Okay, so this is the medium nib. Let's see. I really love this ink. Whoops. Let's try that again. <clears throat> That's nice, but still, it's not too wet. <coughs> it is the Noodlers. Tokyo Gift. I love the name, and I love the shade of red. It's just a really pleasing shade. Cherry Blossom. I guess the name had more to it than I originally thought because that's how it came from. I ordered this one from Anderson Pens. No, Vanessa, I think. Yeah, I, I think I'm getting that right. Okay. Okay, so next is the New To Me pen with the ink that I am familiar with. <laughs> so this is the Wing Sung 3, uh, 3013, the um, vac filler in purple that was sent by the generous pen friend that closes really well by the way it must have it has some kind of a see if you can see that i was going to say gasket but that's not what it's called i just can't think of what it's called the little rubber thing anyway when you close it you can really tell that that's closed and when you go to open it you can tell so i don't think these are going to dry up whatsoever that's my prediction <clears throat> okay so, Wing Sung 3013, 13 is a lucky number for me, with a fine nib. I think that's the only fine nib I have this time inked up. <clears throat> okay, with the lovely Roar and Clinger. Casey, this is my standard ink to try with any new pen. Um, whoops, I <laughs> didn't fill in the color. Okay, and it's writing really nicely. It's uh, it's going down wet. It is a fine nib. It's 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 good and fine, and yet I feel like I can see the ink. It's still drying. It's whoops, I don't know if you yeah. There you go. Whoop. <laughs> I have to get it just right, and then it it really does show. I think I did show it at least once. I tell you, <laughs> I've got studio envy. I've seen people with the most gorgeous setups to be able to have the right lighting and stuff. And maybe one of these days there'll be some of that here. Um, okay, so last but not least is the Wing Sung 3008, the piston filler with the pink ink in it. So here we go. And I'm, I'm kind of glad, no, okay, so I, I lied. I said there was only one fine nib. This is the second fine nib. Kind of glad it is in a fine nib because it might overwhelm if it was too too much. It is a really bright pink. So we got Wing Sung 3008, fine nib, fine Lamy nib. I got to specify that so I don't think it's a stock nib. <laughs> I think my finger already had purple on it. I got a two-tone strip there. Let's try the thumb. Yeah, I, I had a... We'll just put an X through that. <clears throat> okay, so this is uh, the new ink that I got last time I ordered, and I got the little bottle. I'm looking for it. It should be right at my fingertips. Huh! I just saw it the other day. That's funny. Oh, no, it disappeared. Well, anyway, it's... La Artis Artisan, Artisan, Pastier, we won't write that part because they didn't on the ink vial. It just said Rose, Grenade, Pink. And I, I really think this is going to be great for letter writing. I hope so. I'm thinking it is. <clears throat> it's pretty and it's not overwhelming. It's got some subtle shading. I wish I could show you better. 
but it really does have and it, it will uh, look nice I think. Primarily I use my fountain pens for letter writing and note taking. My journals I've got a I've got to do a separate video on that because I really have c come into kind of a new pattern with my journals. But what we're going to do now is flip back and look at the report card for May and I'll be talking with you later about how this goes because I'm just getting started. I just have them, just got them inked up for June 2020 and, and I just have my very first impressions and uh, I know I'm going to love this one. This one, unless it starts writing differently, it's really doing well with that Birmingham ink. And that, that I could have predicted. Definitely think I'm going to love this one um, because I love that nib and that color of that ink, that gorgeous orange where it, it's not so bright. It's just beautiful. And then the Aurora Purple. Ooh, that's going to be... I'm really going to have to top myself out of a bottle of that. And same, I like the Diamine Alexandrite too. It has heavy sheening though, and I'm not sure how I'll do over time with that, whether I'll get tired of it or not. We'll see. Then the, the Noodler's Tokyo Gift Cherry Blossom. I want to do some Nick Stewart with that. And, and when I get ready to do that, I'll share it with you. And then let's see, the Wing Sung with the Roar and Clinger Casia. Um, I think that's going to be a nice note taker. I have my little... Uh, notebook that I, I take notes on for stoicism and for um, the critical thinking class that I'm watching from uh, SBRE Brown and other other things that I'm trying to learn. And that paper in that Dingbat's notebook is perfect for the fountain pens. So I can see myself using the new purple pen um, for that and really enjoying it. And it's got that strap on the side. I can strap it right on the side. And then this this one here, I just <laughs> I just had a visual on that ink bottle. There it is. It just kind of blends in. So this is a small bottle that I'm trying out. It it turned out to be that if I got two or three samples, it was practically it was easier to just get the whole bottle because it wasn't that expensive. The La artisan uh, rose. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'll get set up to show you how last month went. Okay, so here it is. Here is the May 2020 report card. I uh, had a lot of interesting things happen, but let's start with the Twisby Go with the broad nib. Uh, that was my sapphire one. With the, and I put in Sailor 50 States, California. What a gorgeous ink. That was a mainstay for writing letters. I was really, really happy with it. Um, it was a little tiny bit drier than what I'm used to when I go ahead and ink that pen up. But like I'd be comparing like say KWZ Hawaii Blue or um, something like uh, Straits Pen ink. So I can't really do that because that's not apples to apples. I'm not even very familiar with some of these Sailor inks, but I did not have any trouble at all. I just noticed that it was a little drier, but I still gave it an A. It was great. I used it for almost every letter, at least, the, you know, the lead um, page of almost every pen pal letter. So for May, so it was really good. Next was the Nemesine Singularity, brand new to me pen. I'd had it a while, but hadn't written with it. And I put in Diamine Cult Pen's Deep Dark Orange. That was excellent. And that's the one I was using a lot in my uh, uh, commonplace notebook, the Dingbats. And I use that almost every day. That was great. <clears throat> Very smooth, great for notes. Need to see this in a broad nib. Yes, what I realized was, as much as I enjoyed it with the fine nib, um, I'd like to see that ink in a in a broad or stub nib. And that's just a matter of uh, one of these times, you know, choosing that. So next was my Retro 51 Tornado with a 1.1 Ultraviolet. Oh, okay, that's the color of the pen. Noodler's Violet. I gave it a B, but I, I was missing the Goulet 1.5 stub. It, it seems that when I compare those two head on, I really prefer the, the 1.5 number 6 stub, but it's very slight, and I gave it a B because I still wanted to write with it. I just, I don't know whether it feels just a little less rounded than the Goulet stub or what. I have to really, like, put it under the loop and look at it, I guess. Okay, next was Twisby Go Broad. This was the clear one. I've got two the same, except one is sapphire and one is clear. And this, I had the Pure Pens Lanbrus Slate, and it was perfection. I gave that an A+. It was just so great. The way the ink flowed and the way it looked in that broad nib, 
it had just enough shading and it was nice and dark without being black and I really enjoyed that all month long. I wrote quite a few letters with it which you know I don't normally pick up gray for letters that's more of a journaling for me but I think I don't think people would mind it looked nice and then Jen Hao 159 with a 1.1 Goulet stub that's my second favorite stub um, and I put KWZ standard honey in that that was an A that was excellent for letter writing super I had no problems I ran it dry just excellent and then next was the Conklin Duragraph the Purple Nights I have a broad yo-wo nib in it and noodlers I had spelled it wrong last month Seguro wine oh somebody told me how to say that and I'm already separated from the paper that that was my cheat sheet to tell me but that is a gorgeous gorgeous kind of a magenta ink and I love it that was uh, these two were the the favorite the Pierre Penn's Lambrus slate and the noodlers uh, Seguro wine that was excellent for letter writing and I just I ran it right to the end so I'm really enjoying that <clears throat> okay next up was a little sad story but hopefully it'll have a happy ending <clears throat> my little uh, vintage Waterman's 52 with the number two nib <clears throat> excuse me I put the Krishna Sufi and I regretted putting that in there because I had some issues and I never had any drying issues or any issues with the pen before so um, I'm thinking that it wasn't a good ink to put in it and I feel kind of dumb. I really shouldn't have, uh, have deviated from what I knew would work because that's an old pen, a beautiful pen and how I sure hope I haven't heard it. So I put incomplete due to the pen issues. I cleaned it out immediately. What, uh, it was like the second or third day when I realized there was trouble. I certainly didn't want it to um, harm the pen and hopefully I didn't. So I'm just going to hold my breath on that till I get a chance to really investigate and try again with uh, something else. So uh, last but not least, Diplomat Magnum with a medium nib, uh, the gray one with uh, Birmingham, and I <laughs> messed that up, Slag of Gray. That was a pen friend gift, the, uh, the ink sample. I gave it a B. I love the color of the ink, but the, uh, I, didn't, I wasn't enjoying the medium nib in the pen that much. So... Probably would have been better off if I had put that into the Diplomat Magnum with the broad nib. I bet it would have been a different story. So like I said, my tie for the best combination, I think you can see that, are, were the Twisby Go um, with the Lambrus Slate. That was excellent. And I, I could just keep going with that, but I think I may have used all the ink. There isn't very many drops left. And then um, the tie was the uh, Conklin Duragraph, which I used to not like, but since I put a really good nib in it, uh, a, a broad, um, I guess it was, it was either a Goulet or a Yowo, I can't remember, but it's the same basic nib. Um, those were, the, were tied for first place, just totally excellent. And I will remember those as great combinations. Uh, I do all of my letter writing right now on um, Tomoe River paper, with very few exceptions so okay so that's it and it has to be because this has gone on a long time let's take one more look at the pens um you you guys that have followed me for a while are already aware there's there are a lot of uh, duplications in terms of pens because i'm really choosing them probably more for the nib um and performance and i and it's the ink i just want to see how the ink does and i kind of uh, I have a hard time experimenting, but I had no trouble filling this new pen up when it came through the door. So every month I want to try at least one pen that I haven't written with yet um, and, and share that with you. So, okay, so what are you inking up with? Uh, I love to hear about it. I always, in this notebook, I even jot down inks like I'll, uh, somebody will, will mention an ink in a comment and if I'm with it, I'll write it in here. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll write, you know, what to look for, and I've got my critical thinking notes, too. But if I remember to do that, then next time I order samples, I'll, I'll say to myself, oh, that person highly recommended the, this ink or that ink, and, and I like to, to do the, <laughs> the sample thing. <laughs> I need to be knocked beside the head, I guess, because uh, I got too many, that's all. So, okay, I'm going to let you go now, and I hope you're having a great day. Amidst all of the different things that are happening in the world, um, we do need this break, this, um, this hobby, and something good to focus on, and, and I really lean on it heavily right now.
So I'm sure that some of you do as well. I will talk to you later. Bye for now.